My fellow Americans, whatever you may think of Russia, it is a sovereign state. And this means that not in the fantasy world of good guys and bad guys, but in the real world where powers use every resource at their disposal to compete for survival and influence, in this real world, according to international law, Russia has the right to defend its economic and political interests as long as it stays within the bounds of same international law just like any other country. You may feel, and many proponents of a certain worldview do feel, that Russia is simply evil and needs to die. You have the right to your opinion. However, you cannot expect that Russia will fail to defend itself against a world that feels that way about it. From the point of view of Russia's leadership, the country has every reason to be more than a little concerned that, at the very least, a coalition of Western states is looking to minimize its power in the world and, if possible, to overthrow its leadership and break Russia up into smaller pieces. In a few days, it will be 25 years since Mikhail Gorbachev, overthrown by Boris Yeltsin, signed away the existence of the Soviet Union and plunged the country into an irreversible tailspin that ended with it breaking up into 15 pieces. Under Yeltsin and the constitution that he ratified under close American tutelage in 1993, the same year he brought the military into Moscow and had tanks fire at the parliament, killing up to a thousand people so that he could retain power. Under Boris Yeltsin's regime, the economy collapsed over and over. Systems of law and order, education, medicine, culture, industry, even strategic sectors. All these things collapsed and the country's economy fell into the hands of a small group of mafioso godfathers. The country went from being an economically self-sufficient one to being a single export economy, so that price-fixing abroad could manipulate Russia's economy. Mind you, the people live poorly either way. Either the Soviet state bureaucracy keeps the country's natural wealth from trickling down to them, or the oligarchs and their private armies do. When Gorbachev agreed to tear down the Berlin Wall in 1989, he claims that he received a verbal promise from the heads of NATO and the United States that NATO would not expand to the east, into the territory the Soviet Union had sacrificed millions of its citizens to clear of the Nazi plague in World War II. And yet, NATO has expanded all the way to Russia's western borders now, well inside the territory of the former Soviet Union. Just last month, NATO opened four new bases in former Soviet republics, where, by the way, millions of Russians still live because it has been their home for generations. Republics where, because they are trying to garner favor from the West, the Russian language is forbidden and speaking it in public carries heavy penalties or even prison time. Praising your grandfather for beating the Nazis is strictly forbidden because he did so as a member of the Red Army. His medals for valor in battle against the Nazis are illegal because they bear Soviet insignia. There's a lot more to say about the concerns of the Russian leadership, but the point I'm trying to make is that Russia has every reason to be interested not so much in Donald Trump being president per se as in Hillary Clinton not being president of the United States. Hillary Clinton is a representative of a liberal elite that has for over 30 years been in power in the United States and at the helm of what Russia and many other countries throughout the world see as quite aggressive international policy. Yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, oh, I'm sure it did. As much as many of us would love to ignore or trivialize the existence of enormous numbers of people throughout the world who see the United States as aggressors, they nevertheless exist, and the leadership of Russia, a very large and powerful country, is one of them. Believe it or not, Russia's current leadership has a strong history of being in favor of a Western model of free market trade. So, when a prospective US president like Donald Trump, who is also a successful businessman, says that he wants to make deals with Russia instead of war, they like to hear that. It's not that they believe him, you understand. In general, unlike Americans for the most part, Russians do not believe anything any politician says. But 
Russia has had such a difficult time attempting to communicate or deal with the West, especially over the last few years, that any alternative to the status quo is welcome. And this may be news to you out there, but many Americans who are nowhere near being Republicans or wanting Trump to be president feel the same way about Hillary Clinton for any number of reasons. So let's get down to brass tacks. Russian hackers have leaked DNC emails. The CIA and the FBI both now confirm the still pretty vague claim that Russian hacking was designed to affect US elections. Hacking is one of the many tools every single government uses to interfere in the proceedings of other governments, as well as in strategic industrial and financial structures, for purposes of gaining intelligence or to dig up dirt on someone for blackmail leverage on the international economic political world stage. Taking for granted the fact that interference in other countries' affairs is standard practice worldwide, we must now be very careful to find out exactly what the Russian hacking consisted of. Did they leak DNC emails from Hillary Clinton's private server in order to sway Americans' opinions? And that's it? Because if so, this is extremely innocuous, especially compared to the kind of stuff the US have been openly doing in Ukraine and even in Russia itself. Or did the Russian hackers actually change the election results? If this is the case, the implications will be great and reach far in many directions. To my mind, precisely this information makes the difference between US election procedures, perhaps the office of the President of the United States itself potentially being destabilized, or the whole hacking scandal being just a bunch of boys crying wolf for their own political and possibly financial reasons. In this age, when studies show that roughly three quarters of people cannot tell the difference between real news and fake news, when George Soros is about to bankroll the Facebook censorship program, I urge you, my fellow human beings, to be more vigilant than ever against allowing anyone to work you up into such a frenzy that you potentially give up everything for a fight against an enemy that is not yours. In this holiday season, May we all retain our sanity. In Russia, may 2017 not end up being a repeat of 1917. May the world strive toward harmony and compassion. We need all our critical thinking skills and all our mental, emotional, and even spiritual wiles. Thank you for letting me share my views and opinions with you. We'll get into some more history next time on Understand Russia.